We're four friends who live across the globe and share a love of Bon Appetit's YouTube channel. So we came together to bring you our thoughts on what BA serves up and try our hands at recreating their dishes. Welcome to Pod Appetit. Hey guys, it's Justine, and on this episode of Side Dish, I'll be making vegan Snickers. You see, you see, you see what I did there? I did it just like like Claire. Um, that's on purpose because I am, of course, referencing Pastry Chef attempts to make gourmet Snickers. Now, I am not crazy enough to make something completely like from scratch like Claire does in this video. And the recipe I'll be using today is not a BA recipe. So I'm sorry, I'm breaking the rules a bit, but I figured it's okay because I'm paying homage to this uh, video, which, you know, there isn't a recipe. They don't give you a recipe. She says it at the end, but whatever. Whatever, I'm making up my own rules. It's cool. It's 9 a.m. on a Saturday. Let's do this shit. <laughs> so I am going to watch Gourmet Make Snickers episode. I'm going to react to that now. I haven't watched it in a long while. The video came out December 21st, 2018. Damn, girl. It's uh, only 20 minutes long. I'm trying to see if Claire has got any tips, words of wisdom for me because I'm very nervous. I've never attempted a bake like this, except I've made very, very long time ago. And with help, I made some vegan peanut butter cups. This seems a lot more difficult. But fortunately, the vegan recipe I have picked out and consulted with my other pot appetit ladies on seems to be simple. There are only seven ingredients. So like I said, let's fucking do this. Yeah. Gourmet makes. Brad and Claire. Classic. <laughs> I'm going to be Claire on day three. Dude, I love Snickers. Can't have them anymore because they're not vegan. Nougat. Caramel peanuts, chocolate. I think only the peanuts are vegan. <laughs> what are those orange packages of Snickers there? Oh, she's got the almond Snickers. Do you hear my yawn? I'm hype. <laughs> I like when she dissects the candy. What even is nougat? 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 Andy. Chew factor. Rick! It's the old video with Rick. Gabby. It's classic. Christina, caramel pull. Caramel is not vegan, and I'm not gonna be making a caramel that is like that, although you can. This was a choice. Why is everything gonna be made with milk chocolate? It's so fucking gross, sorry. <laughs> After you don't have dairy for a while and you have something, and I've had, you know, whatever, who cares? I've had it, I've tried it again. <laughs> gross. According to this guy, me, Mark Summers. Easy, Claire. Simple. Oh, that's an interesting graphic in the shape of a Snickers with all the ingredients, with all the components. I love when Claire fucks up. It makes me feel better about what I'm going to do. She's so good. She's so good at her job. <laughs> oh, this is classic where they flashback <laughs> to her struggling in Skittles. Oh, my God. That's horrifying. She gets a nougat stuck to her gloves. Ugh. 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 Rant time. She is me. This video is so good. I love Claire justifying herself and the effort she puts in. Mm. See, she's trying to get the fluffiness of it and she was adding the dense peanut butter to it. She really needs the air in there. Uh, also, the sugar is breaking down those egg whites. Think about it, Claire. Reinvent yourself. Four days and one flew later. Chris. New nougat recipe, French style with honey. Hmm. She overcooked it. Ugh. It looks disastrous. This. No, it might be okay. She, Claire can bring anything back from the dead. I. Mad props to her. It looks good. Hmm. Crush the peanuts. Thinking about it. She is killing it. I mean, like, watch every gourmet makes, and a lot of them are super, super difficult. And this one is just like. You can do this, Claire. Like, let's do this. It's not that, you know, she could make any caramel. She's got to make the perfect caramel that matches their caramel. She just made a giant Snickers. Chris is a fan of the French nougat as an Italian. 
Claire is half dead with flu, but she's still killing it. Ooh, pizza roll, sharp knife. I don't have any like really sharp knives, man. We're halfway through the video and I'm like, that's a fucking Snickers, yo. Just needs chocolate. Just needs some chocolate. <gasps> Temper the chocolate. Temper the chocolate. Half milk, half dark. Chris in the background. <laughs> oh God, the, ugh. It's just infamous, everybody knows. I am so nervous about melting chocolate, but I'm just gonna fucking put in a microwave. <laughs> I can't, I'm not doing like a temper. Temper is real science. Well, that's good, I'm not using molds because she says if you don't temper it properly, it doesn't pop out of the molds. Dudes, also I watched uh, Great British Bake Off episode two last night, which was Biscuit Week, and so many people are making stuff like this that they had their struggles with their chocolate, their nougat, their molds. I'm like, oh God, oh God, even Great British Bake Off awesome bakers are having trouble. And I'm like, uh, so many things can go wrong. <sighs> Hyperventilate. Okay, do they pop out of the molds? Is the chocolate tempered? It's not tempered. Chris in the background. Why you gotta do that, Chris? The next week, Claire says Friday doesn't exist because she was delirious. She says, edit it out. Editor says, nope. I'm an editor. I get it. <laughs> I love it. I love it when Claire's like, Ugh, I did it. It's fine. Next day. No, no. Let's fucking do this right. Yeah. Let's do this, Claire. <laughs> Claire doesn't even remember that Chris was there and trying it and told her it was good. She's just like, nope. I have no idea. Ooh, that flaky salt. Yum. She's remaking everything. Everything looks great. Wow, yeah, they look so different from the ones that she made that I'm like, those are great, but these ones are, like, amazing. See, she was right. Okay, now we're tempering chocolate again. Are we tempered? Fucking go for it, Claire. She didn't grease the mold. She fucked up. I mean, we all fuck up. I gotta remember that. Even Claire fucks up. She googled. You don't have to grease the molds. Will they pop out? <gasps> We both inhaled at the same time. Fucking victory. Yeah, that is some thick chocolate. That's what I'm worried about. I think they're done. Everybody's, yeah. Gabby says she's amazing. <laughs> Claire is so me. Or she's just like, whatever. It took me three days to make them. They're they're good, but here's the part where I'm not the best. <laughs> That's me. That is 100% me. Too much chocolate. Even, even she's like, it's too much chocolate. Carla, this video has got everybody in it before everybody's got way too busy in their vacations. And Oh, and there's Molly in the background. <laughs> it's a lot of work and I'm never doing this again. I feel that. I feel like I'm going to say that at the end of this episode. But you know what? I actually feel better. Like I was feeling a lot more nervous before watching this that I'm like, oh, everybody can make mistakes and stuff. But now I'm like, everybody makes mistakes, even Claire. So like, let's do this. That's what I said. Circus Olay. <laughs> okay. Whew. Yeah. See, there's my anxiety. Here we go. I'm just like super amped already today, if you couldn't tell, that I'm starting my day with this recording and I have got so much stuff to do this weekend. Like... I was already doing podcasting somewhat, quote unquote, full time and doing Lady Pod Squad. So I have two podcasts, this one, which is called Pod Appetit, a Bon Appetit fan cast. And I've got the Cutaways podcast. And Pod Appetit is weekly now and I edit all the episodes and the Cutaways is bi-weekly, but also requires watching a movie for each episode. So everything's going to go to the weekends now, right? Uh, because, yeah, I've got this job and we shall see. It's a freelance gig and I am a freelancer living that freelance life. I think it's cool because right now I'm editing YouTube and Snapchat videos for this company. And <laughs> it's pretty great because, as you know, based on this, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and they have certain looks to the style and especially... You look at any Bon Appetit videos now that have drastically changed their style to get that younger audience. Like, I'm looking at that as research when I do my work. I make videos and I'm like, oh, let's do these quirky punch-ins, you know? Like, 
it's a style and I'm doing it and getting paid for it and it's great. So that's what I've been doing. If you've been uh, missing me, wondering what's up with Justine. Okay, so vegan Snickers. I am using a recipe from frommybowl.com slash healthy Snickers bars. Say they're healthy. Yeah, sure. There's healthy things here, but it's not like complete candy. This is all plant-based yum yums. So there are only seven ingredients and they are for the caramel. We're doing one packed cup medjool dates, two tablespoons peanut butter, one teaspoon vanilla extract, fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then the quote unquote nougat layer. We're just taking a fourth a cup of that date caramel and adding some oat flour to it. And then just a, a third a cup dry roasted peanuts. They say they use salted. I bought salted, roasted and salted peanuts from Whole Foods. And then four ounces of vegan chocolate. I also got the chocolate baker's chocolate chunks that are vegan that I will melt down via the microwave method, which the chocolate part I am the most anxious about. I don't want too thick of a chocolate layer because I think that'll ruin the effect completely. Like if you have to bite down really hard and, the, and just like kind of squeezes out, that would be nightmare for me. So yeah, I started already earlier, <laughs> right before recording, by making the oat flour. You need two thirds cups of it. So basically you're gonna double that with oats. I put it just in my um, crappy food processor and it works. Now I've got two thirds cup of oat flour. It worked. We were all surprised. It's great. <sighs> I gotta take a breath because I'm like, <laughs> like I am just so amped and like crazy for today. Okay, dude, I guess we actually have to do this now. <laughs> okay, um, so I've got dates. I got them from Ralph's on sale. So I got a lot of them. So I'll need to be making some more date stuff later on. I've never made anything with dates. So here we go. I love how my cabinet, <laughs> like I open it and I'm just like, walnuts and seeds and cashews and dates and all the peanuts like all of the things that i'm using it's now like my pot appetit section <laughs> it's great i love it makes me feel good to be like look i'm cooking things i'm making things here you're doing it you're doing it justine yay okay sweetness is in our nature what did I just say? Okay. Claire did it. I can do it. And like, Claire could do it. I could do it. Claire could do it. And also Claire fails. Claire fails. It's okay. I can do this. Pack them. Really pack them into one cup. Now these are already pitted. That's amazing. Cause I don't know how. Oh my goodness. I'm smelling them. What is it? I'm like, what do they smell like? I'm like, I guess they smell like dates, but there's something else it reminds me of. You can smell this. <laughs> Should I eat one? I've got like a million. Ooh. Oh, they're like giant raisins. That's what it smells like. Very sweet. Yum. Nature's fucking candy. <laughs> I sound like such a vegan. I also hate complaining and be like, I've got a job now that I do during the week. But like, I have a very, 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 very long commute. So it's all I can do during the week. But you know what the great thing is? This is like the best thing ever. It's like two blocks away from a Trader Joe's and I have an hour lunch break. So I can fucking go grocery shopping whilst at work. So I just like plan my recipes while I'm waiting for videos to render. Okay, really pack, it says really fucking pack them. That's what, if I wrote the recipe, I am so sweary today. They're a little bit disturbing like how like sweet and squishy they are. I'm a little bit disturbed now. What does it say? What does it say? It says, Transfer the dates to a larger bowl and cover with hot water. Soak the dates for 10 minutes or just cover the dates in water and microwave for 60 to 80 seconds if you want to be efficient. I love to be efficient, but I'm down to just soak these. Props to Amanda who texted me and asked me how I was going and if she... And she asked me if I was going to be tempering the chocolate, which I said no. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just, it's all a meme. Actually, I said LOL no. Okay, so back to this. My 
dates have been soaked. I don't know the purpose of this. Maybe to soft them because we're about to gooify them. Leave in the comments below what you think. Step number three. Drain any excess liquid off of the medjool dates. They should be relatively moist but not dripping. And add them to a food processor or high-speed blender with the remaining ingredients for the caramel. Process until thick and smooth, scraping down the sides of the device if necessary. Okay, I'm gonna drain these suckers in my little uh, colander. Definitely got some like little bits come off. Mm. Squeeze and make sure there's no hidden water inside because they're a bit, they're hollow, so they've been pitted. I'm doing this all over my counter, which I'll have to clean up after. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Ooh, squishy one. They seem pretty good to go. What did it say? Moist. Relatively moist, but not dripping. But you don't have to dry them either. Either. My pet towel. Clean up the mess I've made. I would love a new food processor. BT dubs if you're feeling generous. Uh, it's very small. And I use it a bunch. Mostly make pesto, of course. <laughs> Okay, remaining, add them, and the remaining ingredients for the caramel, which are two tablespoons peanut butter. I got that Earth Balance peanut butter and flaxseed creamy. Contains peanuts. I like the Earth Balance with the flaxseed, because I always like to sneak some flaxseed into my foods and talk like this. Cause it's got those omega threes that we need in our lives that people usually get from meat and I do not cause I don't consume meat. And now I'm British vegan. Did you know that vegan people are just better than other people? That's from Scott Pilgrim, okay? I don't, <laughs> I do not believe that. But my friend Robbie and I, since he's vegetarian, we do say that we are better than other people. As a joke, as a jape. It's LJ now. Can I do a good LJ impression? Oh my God, what'd she do? Okay, this is one tablespoon. Right, guys. What did she say? What's it, what's it? What's a good LJ catchphrase? I should know, I edit her a lot. I know the way LJ speaks. It's fun. Cause LJ is the type of person, like my co-host Ashley on the cutaways, they go for it and they're talking, but they'll get there. They will get there. I do love that about being an editor. You just you just make people sound uh, like coherent, wonderful, superhuman people. And I love that Ashley and LJ and Meg and Amanda give me that trust to do free reign with, you know, how they speak, what they sound like. I always try to make all their jokes land. If they don't tell a good joke, you won't hear it. That's what being an editor is. It's making everybody look great. As same as it is in film editing, you make the DP look great, you make the director look great, you make the actors look great, you make the costuming look great. Everybody is the best. But I mean performance, if it's narrative editing, performance is top. One teaspoon vanilla extract. <laughs> oh my God, this thing's on so tight. Okay. Damn, girl. That's why I get very self-conscious when I'm doing these recording of myself because I have to edit myself. So I'm already thinking ahead of like, I'm gonna edit this out because I sound super rambly, you know? And as the perfectionist I am, I'm like, oh God, I gotta take out all my mistakes. But what I've learned, what I've learned from editing their episodes and my episode is that people need to hear when I fuck up <laughs> and when I'm exacerbated. It's, it's always my instinct to take that out, but learning from watching like especially gourmet makes where claire's always like we're gonna edit that out we're gonna don't show that like i'm just like her where i'm like no, no, no you don't need to see that but that's where you get like the real learning and the real sort of feeling like you can identify with the person anyway i'm gonna make this perfectly now what's next um <laughs> fourth a teaspoon salt salt i also love learning like people's quirks like that was like when i was talking about the lj thing actors have quirks uh, Amanda always starts her sentences the same way. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I mean, like, you get to learn people's personalities so well by editing them. I mean, a little too much salt, but that's cool. 
Salt is good. This is bon appetit, yo. Oh, and Meg is pretty much perfect as is because Meg is a writer. She is a self-editor already. So she is very precise and lovely. And pretty much how you hear her is 100% how she is and presents herself. So one of these days, Meg will slip up. (laughs) I'll be there. I love them. Okay, I've added... Dates, peanut butter, vanilla extract, salt. I always say salt because it's from um, Brazil, which is one of my favorite movies. Salt. Now I gotta food process them till thick and smooth. Motherfucker. (laughs) Yo, I just totally put everything in my food processor without the blade. Mmm. Mmm, feeling good about my choices today. In my last episode, I would have edited that out and it would have gone great. Ouch. Handling sharp objects. Okay. Nope, you fucking, you stay in there. Oh my, fuck you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yes, yes, no, no. <laughs> It's so angry at me. Yes. There. There. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. No big. Let's do it. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. It's a it's an interesting uh thick paste already. I think the color is going to be great. It's very thick. It's a little angry. Mmm. Oh, yeah. It's starting to look um, very cookie dough. Okay. Yeah. It looks spreadable. I'm not going for, like, liquefied state. This is looking good. Yum. Ooh. I mean, it's not going to be caramel. It's not going to be stretchy stretch caramel. It's going to be sweet, like fruit paste. That's what, where you get like the healthy aspect of it. I'm here for it. It's it's sweet. It's nice. I do think a lot of people are going to be mad. They're like, you said Snickers. And I'm like, ha! Vegan tricks. Step four, remove the date caramel from the food processor. Add the oat flour to the food processor. No need to rinse. With one fourth a cup of the date caramel and process until well incorporated, this should form a slightly sticky dough that will hold together when you pinch it. So they're saying add the flour, make a dough that won't be too dry, hopefully. And that's going to be our nougat. Food processor back on here with my two thirds cup of. Oat flour, which is quite a lot. It looks like so much. I feel like I should measure this again. I'm getting paranoid. Oh, if anything, I don't have enough, but... Nope, that's it. Oh, yeah! You can tell when it starts incorporate because it starts out like all white, like a snowstorm, and then just starts to become browner and browner as it starts to mix in with the date paste, and then it starts to roll, roll, roll like a cookie dough. That's rolling. That is incorporated. That that yeah, that's it. That's it, babe. Pretty oaty. Yeah, this is gonna be healthy AF. Oh my goodness. We were promised Snickers. <laughs> Step five: firmly and evenly press the oat flour nougat into a small and narrow container. See notes. They said, I used a narrow silicone mold that actually came with my bento box to make these bars. However, you can use any narrow dish you'd like, such as a bread pan or even a square or rectangular Tupperware. If your dish is not flexible, I would recommend lining it with parchment paper before you add the filling layers to it. That is my plan. I'm going to use my loaf pan. I'm going to line it with parchment paper. It's going to look just like Claire did. Ooh, yeah. 
Let's do this. Forme makes. Okay. They do this perfectly in the test kitchen. I don't know how. I do this not perfectly. Um... Is this like wrapping presents that I'm also terrible at? Oh, this. Let's fold this like this, and then this. It might be messy. I might make a bit of a mess. Okay. What did it say again? Let's dump this out. I'm gonna use my hands, possibly. I gotta think about the thickness. It does not indicate the thickness on here. I'm gonna figure this out because it's a little bit, um, what would they say on Bake Off? A little crumbly, but not crumbly, but like, let's work it together. Let's roll it out, smoosh it down. I feel like it's not gonna make that much. It's gonna make like three Snickers. <laughs> I'm smooshing. Let's try and make it thin. Let's thin this out. Let's try to make it thin and even. Okay, this shit, it says it yields eight bars. Well, I like big bars, I guess. If not, whatever. I mean, so far it seemed like simple enough to make. That I'm like, I could make this again. Plus I've got a million dates. Would you like to go on a million dates with me? She's single. This looks pretty thin. This looks good. I'm not seeing eight good. Okay, I don't want to touch it anymore. I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Step six, use a spatula to spread the remaining date caramel evenly over the top of the nougat. Then sprinkle the peanut pieces over the caramel. Use your fingers to press the peanuts into the caramel layer so they stick. Okay. That looks like there's a lot more of the caramel. This layer is going to be thicker. I don't know how to do this properly. Well, Kind of glob it on into places and smush down. It's still, you know, a sticky, it's made with sticky stuff. It's still a sticky paste. This is the weirdest shit I've ever done. That's not too bad. It's not, it's not as bad looking. I think maybe six bars out of this, not eight. I got my roasted and salted peanuts. They're like halved. Uh, I did like in the video that Claire crushed them even more. I am feeling that. I want to crush these peanuts. That's my Claire contribution. One third a cup of peanuts. Where's my third cup? I think it's more authentic this way. <laughs> Good. It's a lot of peanuts. I'm going for it. I need it. It's a fucking Snickers. Let's do it. Smush, 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 smush. Smush, smush, smush. Yeah, I got a little fine, even coating. Peanuts. Smush, 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 smush. Oh, this part's the best. Yes. Half of this, I don't care if this comes out because honestly, this recipe is pretty fun. I'm like, what the fuck is anything? Let's do it. It's beautiful. Well, step seven, place in the freezer for 60 to 90 minutes until firm. That's what I'm going to do. And I'll see you after the music break. Okay, guys, I'm back. It's been uh, two hours later. Uh, what did I do in my two hours time? I had lunch and I recorded with Meg. Now I've just pulled out my filling. It's looking pretty good. It's uh -oh. starting to get a little soft. I feel like all the next stuff that I'm going to be doing has to be done with a bit of urgency because, uh, you know, California heat wave all the time. And, you know, I'm going to be melting chocolate and setting in the, the filling and making sure it's I don't know, like I said, this is part I'm most nervous about, making sure there's not too much chocolate on the Snickers because that's where Claire said that she would have tweaked her Snickers. But you're gonna be with me. You're gonna be with me on this journey. We believe in each other. We can do this. I'm going to prep 
my plate that's going to have the final stuff on with the parchment paper because we do have a bit of rogue par parchment paper from when I had to cut it to fit into the uh, loaf pan. So I'm going to do that. So the step is remove the frozen filling from the container. Use a sharp knife to cut it into bar sized pieces. Return those to the freezer while you melt your chocolate. Melt your chocolate either using double boiler or microwave. I'm gonna use the microwave. So it says you place your chocolate pieces in a wide bowl. I'm using a wide microwavable Tupperware container. Microwave about 30 seconds, interval stirring in between. Once the chocolate is 75% melted, stop microwaving it and stir with a spatula until completely melted. Moving quickly, place one candy bar into the melted chocolate. Use two forks to flip the bar until it is coated in chocolate on all sides. Remove the bar from the melted chocolate, letting any excess chocolate drip off. Then place it onto a plate lined with the parchment paper. Repeat with the remaining bars. And then place the bars in the fridge for five to 10 minutes to allow the chocolate to harden. And then that is it, serve and enjoy. So I'm going to do all that. I'm using the dark chocolate baking chunks from Whole Foods. Ooh, yum. Okay, I have all of my instruments prepared. Okay, let's cut the bars. Going through my mind is how thin to cut these. His instinct says I don't want to cut them thin, but then it's like, you'll get the higher yield. But I'm like, but, but Snickers, they are a bit ooey gooey. They don't feel very frozen. Some of these are thick boys. One, two, three, four, five. I've made five. I'm making five. I'm making five thick boys. Into the freezer. Go, 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 go. Chill. We can do this. We can do this, but we got to hustle. Let's uh, melt some chocolate. 30 seconds. Oh, yes. Half melted chocolate. Oh, that looks... I want to bathe in this, except it's really, really hot. Okay, I'm spooning it over my flat surface here. If any time I feel that the bars get too gooey, I'm putting them back in the freezer. Yeah, I made some thick. Okay, here goes one. Down in the chocolate. Take out my forks. Spin. Lost some peanuts. <laughs> oh no. Here we go. Roll, 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 roll. So very thick. Lift, girl. Be the bar I believe you can be. Next one. <laughs> oh god. Oh no, I got chocolate. Who's getting chocolate everywhere? It's me. It me. Roll, 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 roll. The top is the hardest. <laughs> Oh god, no, don't become too thick and heavy. Nope, nope, nope. Lift, 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 lift. Put these little ones back in the freezer. I believe in you. Spin, spin, spin. Oh shit. Being frugal on the chocolate may have been a bad idea. I have mysterious chocolate down my arm. I got more nice melty chocolate again. I'm rebrushing on some chocolate on the top of the other ones that look as blech. Just to maybe give them a nice little top coat of nicety. This third one looks a bit lopsided. The fourth one's looking okay now. Now it looks like a penis. That looks like that. Last one. Last one's gonna be great. Brush from the freezer. Dunk, spin. Yeah, and that hot chocolate. Oh yeah, best one. Best one, you got it, you got it. Yeah, it's like, as I go on, as like the bars get more melty and the chocolate gets more firm, it's just like, it becomes so much more difficult. I am putting these into the fridge. Okay, now that I've cleaned chocolate off of like my entire body, I'm back. The bars have been sitting in the fridge for, I don't know, like 15, 20 minutes or so. The chocolate is set. I did make some thick boys, as I keep saying embarrassingly over and over again. Here's the thing. You know, some of them look ugly, I think. To me. To me, I'm like, is this Instagrammable sort of thing. But whatever. It's it's what we all knew they were going to look like. And I think well, they don't look too bad. They don't look too bad. 
But uh, so since I only have five, my goal is to take them out, cut one in half and try it. But it's also 80 degrees in my apartment. So there's that. I'm going to try not to handle them too much and maybe have to rush and put them back in the fridge. But I do need to get some pictures of them for our Insta. So I'm going to determine which one has the ugliest end and eat that one. Okay. I'm all picking them up. Oh, that is a lot. Yeah. Peanut layer is lacking as I pop this open. The caramel layer is the most. The nougat layer is not bad. Sending pics to Amanda. Have I mentioned it's 80 degrees in my apartment? <laughs> Sweaty laughter face. <laughs> I'm going to take a bite of this. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so surprised. What? Dude, I wish you could see my face right now. I am shocked. Oh my god, these are so good. Wow. I kind of don't have words. They're really good. They're surprisingly very good. Like, I get the caramel. Like, before I was like, it's not going to taste like caramel. And I know, like... It doesn't have the stretch, it doesn't have the pull or that, but like it's there, like a gooier, very soft caramel, like you have in some chocolate bars, like a caramello. <laughs> they're good, they're so good. I feel like you're gonna be like, they're not the best thing in the world, but I didn't think, I think that, I thought they were gonna taste like Fig Newton sort of taste, like just like a, oh, it's a, it's a fruit paste. But no, so far, no. My goodness. Oh, wow. Bye. Okay, haven't done one of these in a while. <laughs> okay, listeners, it's been some time much later in time. <laughs> and now I am joined by co host Amanda. Hello. She volunteered to talk about Snickers with me because I love Snickers. <laughs> Perfectly on cue. <laughs> like seriously, they're probably up there within like my top 5 candy bar, maybe top 3. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, when I before I was vegan, I would say that Snickers would be my favorite candy bar. So I haven't had one in a very long time, 8 or more years. Yeah, I was going to say do the listeners know how many years you've been vegan they do now <laughs> <laughs> the more you know amanda since you're here now i still have snickers because you can as it's in the recipe you can freeze them yeah for up to like a month or more i mean whatever they're cold and frozen i've actually found them that's the best way to consume them yeah i nice know and cold you had texted me that you preferred them when they were the frozen mm -hmm. to the fresh now let me show you i made as i mentioned some big boys yeah these are definitely Bigger than a regular Snickers. Yeah. Like, this is what you think that when you think of Snickers. I feel like it's just like a king size Snickers. It's not like blown out of proportion big. I, like I said, I still have these because like I made five and so far they've just been for me. So I'm not going to like eat a Snickers every day sort of thing. It's like <laughs> when I get home, if I'm feeling like having dessert after I'm eating my late dinner, I'll have half of one. I see. Let me take a bite so I can show you the inside okay. better. Mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the layers. How did you find the like the layering of everything? Because I know you were going off of a vegan recipe, but this is based on like Claire's Gourmet Makes video too. I was very glad I watched the Gourmet Makes because of the way like Claire did techniques. Mm -hmm. I kind of followed her techniques, you know, as like a visual reference. Like with mine... I think the worst thing I did on this was like the chocolate because they look to me, they look messy AF. Like I should have melted more chocolate and did more of like a bigger chocolate bath, you know? Okay. Did you end up tempering the chocolate? F no. <laughs> <laughs> I went with the Claire route being like, not going to do that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have the sous vide, yeah. but then I just also don't have like a candy thermometer. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't either. So I did the microwave technique and uh, yes. it worked perfectly fantastically fine. I just 
needed to make more and i think that has to do with my inexperience as a chocolatier because <laughs> i was like oh use whatever this amount it'll be fine but i was in the end just like kind of scraping the chocolate to be on them which doesn't really help when the top layer is peanuts <laughs> Yeah, that would definitely make it to where it's almost like the peanuts are sticking, can stick through. Yeah, and then like the chocolate starts to like get more hardened and less liquidy, and I'm like, oh god, time crunch. Oh, okay. I am assuming you did not do molds the way that Claire did? No, I did use the loaf pan. Okay. Like she did to press down my base layer and then spread my quote-unquote caramel layer on top of that Mm -hmm. and then put the peanuts and freeze that like that i feel like i did like claire okay i i had the the chips i had the the morsel you know it's like i had the chocolate i could have did it i just i'm very stingy with my ingredients when i cook because i'm used to being poor you know (laughs) yes yes i totally understand that yeah yeah i know like you feel this like I'm like, I could do this, but then I won't have more later for something else. For, yeah, know? for like, a different <laughs> recipe or a different something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to be cost effective with it. And it's it works. It's not going to be the most pretty if you're trying to be cost effective. <laughs> well, and I know you also, like we've talked about on the podcast, like you also are trying to be not just cost effective, but I, I don't know. Uh, you don't want to waste any of the ingredients. Like you want yeah. it to actually be used and not like get thrown away or something. Right. You know those like videos you see on the internet where they're like icing a cake, but they're doing like this like pour over thing and they're like pouring over and it's just like falling Falling. to the sides. And yeah, yeah. that those videos give me anxiety because I'm like, look how much they're wasting. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Is this something that you would make again? Um, you know what? They were fairly easy to make. Okay. I don't know how often people would like here i'm presenting you a gift of homemade snickers like you have to eat it right now it's unpackaged like that sort of thing yeah whereas i'm like i don't know because it it to me since i made i cut the bar so big i made so few i'm like i can't really bring this to a party or invite people over because is there enough to go around uh, yeah. how they're presented like I get like that in the head and just for me there's too much I'm on the fence where I'm like I like them they are pretty easy to make but maybe just for like special things okay you know yeah I just wonder like because if it was something that you were thinking about making again for a party or a din- you know dinner party or something where it's not a ton of people mm-hmm. I didn't know like if you we're planning ahead to have more chocolate if then anything left in the bowl you could use for something else, like a garnish on right, something. Right, or just or... like dip some fresh strawberries in it. You yeah, know? yeah. That's an idea because I think strawberries would pair well with this too. Oh, yeah. I think it definitely would. God, that's making me want like a sundae with peanuts <laughs> and strawberries. I know. Uh. <laughs> So since we have Halloween coming up, this is why I wanted to make them. Like, say, if I'm having, like, a vegan Halloween party or whatever, my friend's coming over to play board games, I'd be like, hey, look at this cool thing I did. I made vegan Snickers. I feel like that would fit, like, the theme, the moment. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think if you, because I know, like, your bars are kind of, like, king size, but if you cut them up into smaller bits before you cover the them, bite size? you could Yeah, Mm -hmm. it could be like the fun size for Halloween kind of thing. That's a good idea. Yeah, I remember you did dates for the caramel. How did you find that working? I think it works really well. It's not the same chew or pull, but it's a very sweet thing. Like, I was really surprised. Like, you can hear me on the recording being very surprised. I thought this was just going to taste like chocolate covered like fig newtons for some reason i also associate figs with dates yeah because i don't I do eat too. a lot of dates i don't know why <laughs> but that's like i'm like are they the same family because that's the association i'm doing so i thought it was just going to be like kind of like fig paste you know what i'm talking about yeah but it's much sweeter than that it tastes it it surprised me okay. but it's not the same my roommate tried these she said that they were delicious they're very good they don't taste like Snickers. They are not the same thing. It's not just the caramel. She said the dark chocolate aspect too. And I'm like, but shouldn't all chocolate be dark chocolate? Because it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, to me, that if I were tasting it, if I could fly out to LA and hang out and taste Please the Snickers, do. Uh, <laughs> someday, someday, uh, mm-hmm. I feel like the the dark chocolate thing isn't because that's part of like Claire talks about whenever she does any gourmet makes with chocolate, she always cuts the milk chocolate with the dark to make it not quite as sweet. So, like, mm-hmm. and and there are versions of Snickers that you can get dark chocolate that I've had because I. Anytime there's a new kind of Snickers, I'm like, yes, please. I'll try that. Totally. Like the peanut butter one I really like. But I can understand, like, the, is particularly the caramel part seemed to be the bit where it was going to have, you know, because you can't do the milk and, like, the dairy side of it. Well, also, like, it's not the same nougat level. because Regular nougat, people don't know, is whipped egg whites. Yeah. This is essentially just the date just the caramel date layer some of that set aside and mixed with oat flour okay so were you able to get sort of the fluffiness with the nougat it's not really a fluffy layer and it's not really like a cookie layer like part of me was like i wish this was a cookie layer and then my roommate was like you're thinking of twix Twix. i'm like oh yeah I'm not really sure what the layer is. There were, as you recall, Amanda, I gave you guys three recipes that I was contemplating. Yeah. And they all varied in the kind of technique or what the layers were. And we decided on this one. But I don't really know like what a vegan alternative to nougat could be yeah. quite yet. Maybe that's something, if you did want to do this again, that you could kind of experiment with. Yeah, I think, yeah, if I did the did do this again like if it became like my yearly thing maybe i would try a different recipe and see how they change subtly or like Mm -hmm. oh i like this aspect of this one and maybe combine it with another one and then i start my own vegan makes candy factory and (laughs) and then you go international and everyone wants justine's vegan snickers yeah but there are lots of recipes on pinterest like Mm-hmm. How Claire does gourmet makes of things. People have been doing homemade snack foods on Pinterest for forever. It's the same thing for vegan alternatives. You can find a vegan alternative, whatever, and make it yourself. And it's to me, it's fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. I literally, as I was watching the gourmet makes episode, I was like taking notes and like learning, even though, you know, it's it's infamous for Claire struggles, you know? <laughs> But she brings, like, her years of experience to it, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that was when I was re-watching that episode. That's one of the things is even when she messes up on the nougat and she keeps kind of refining what she's making, the technique of, like, once it and the caramel are layered, that doesn't change because that's a thing Mm -hmm. that she, like, knows how to do. It's just, like, tweaking ingredients and things like that. Yeah, definitely, like, doing this and going through this process, when you said, like, would you make these again? I was like, yeah, and I would totally have, like, a different experience next time because I can learn to be more like Claire and be like, (laughs) let's change this up, let's do it differently, you know, let's get a better product or, oh, after eating this, oh, maybe this could be done differently, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend if people want to try it out, And make these because it's going to be a heck of a lot easier than the Gourmet Makes one. Just saying. Thanks for listening to Pot Appetit, a Bon Appetit fan cast. We'd love to hear from you. So find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at pod underscore appetit. And on Facebook at Pod Appetit Podcast. You can also email us at podappetitpodcast at gmail.com and find all of our episodes on our website podappetitpodcast.com Until next time, the test kitchen is closed. Do you read books? Do you live by small bodies of water surrounded by trees and other wildlife? Is that geese shit? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, you have found a home here at the Brook Reading Podcast. Each week, I read a book while nestled in my small New Jersey apartment and gaze out the window at a brook. Then I jump online, talk about it, ask for your opinions, and bitch about something for approximately five minutes. If you would like to join this madness, check out the Brook Reading Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or on the Radio Public app. Let's step into some animal feces together.